Good morning to you all. I would like to say thank you for the opportunity to present to you our Italian immigrants' cultural heritage reality in Santa Catarina. We really appreciate that. It's very important to us to show the world the singularity and state of art of this heritage in Santa Catarina, Brazil. And I would like to especially thank Maria Rita Moroso and her crew for this opening. Now my colleague, uh, Marco Gabriel, will present to you the first part of the article and then I will present to the last part. Thank you. Thank you very much, Liliani, and thank you very much for the organizers. Our article is called Timber, Brick and Stone, the Italian Immigrants' Heritage in Santa Catarina between Decadence and Valorization. This paper proposes an evaluation and a comparison of the results obtained by the valorization and safeguarding processes in what we call three macro areas uh, of Italian immigration in Santa Catarina, characterized by their main building material, timber, brick and stone. It aims to interpret how the differences between such architectural compositions favored or hindered their maintenance, as well as what possibilities developed in the relation to the sustainability of the complexes for, from the different uh, socio-economical interpretations that follow the apogee and the decline of the respective construction cycles. It also investigates how tourism, in its role as a replacement economic cycle, affects the relationships between the ensembles and their rural and urban environments, as well as how the touristification processes of other immigration cultures in the state especially the German culture, offer subsidies to development of the commodification of the Italian Catarinense culture. In Santa Catarina, the, the architectural manifestations of the Italian immigrants is spread all throughout the state, but they are mainly concentrated in three most important immigration areas, the West, the Itajaí Valley and the South. It's important to mention that while the Itajaí Valley and the South are products of direct immigration from Italy, the colonization of the West is an internal migration process from Italian immigrants and their descendants who first went to the state of Rio Grande do Sul and then moved toward the west of Santa Catarina and the southwest of the state of Paraná. These areas have been characterized by very clear implementation of the three construction techniques uh, I just mentioned. In the west we see a great concentration of timber architecture in the Itajai Valley where there is a lot of interchange between Italians and Germans. Brick rose as the main material and in the south besides the timber constructions who are also predominant we find very interesting stone ensembles. The preservation of the Italian immigrants' legacy in the state of Santa Catarina is a very late process. It only started around the 1970s, and the first attempts to safeguard architectural heritage related to the Italians in the state was executed by FCC in the 1980s, FCC, Fundação Catarinense de Cultura. A more important project was the Roteiros Nacionais de Imigração em Santa Catarina, commanded by IFAN, that was executed from the 1990s to the 2005. In this vast effort to preserve the architectural heritage of immigrants, Roteiros Nacionais de Imigração has mostly concentrated itself in the coast and the regions nearby, the Itajai Valley and the Tubarão River Valley, therefore exposing the West to the lack of uh, protection schemes. The only protection schemes in place in the West are a few scattered attempts made by municipalities, such as Chapecó, for example, and a very limited number of buildings that have been listed by FCC, but no federal listing is in place. In the West, timber has been used to build pretty much everything from houses to churches to windmills, workshops, hotels, hospitals. In the first phases, the architecture is attached to the rural areas, and so the rural big houses, such as Angelo Roberti's house in the city of Videira that we see in the picture number two, are a very common typology. This typology is very similar to the typologies developed in the state of Rio Grande do Sul prior to the migration process, in which 
two or three story high timber volumes are placed upon uneven terrains where uh, either brick or stone masonry basements arose as a storage space for the traditional products um, produced in, in those properties. After the rural phase, this architecture shifts towards an urban implementation. The urbanization uh, that will start from the 1940s and the 1950s, depending on the city, will eventually make timber architecture out of place. And so the replacement process that was executed in the 1950s, 1960s and 1970s has pretty much left timber architecture isolated within urban fabrics in most of the cities. In this process, obviously, especially the houses and the constructions that were located in the city centers, they start suffering a lot because of the economic value of the plots of land that they are built upon. So a destruction process is in place up to the point where it's really hard to perceive a historic layer anymore. Most of the times what we see are isolated constructions within the urban fabrics. And so speculation will necessarily lead most of these constructions to be disassembled because timber can be re uh, reused. And so they are usually sold as demolition waste timber. We see here in these two examples that the obsolescence process of the timber architecture in the cities has started very early on. These volumes that are not urban nor rural are lost within the urban fabrics and what we most see is that the growing verticalization of the urban centers ultimately accelerates the process of obsolescence by contrast. Architecture made in timber uh, is nowadays usually considered poor people's architecture. And in this sense, real estate speculation forces the plots to be exploited in terms of buildable areas, giving these constructions no chance. So this is one first very important difference from the West and the other two areas. It is very hard to foresee a implementation of ensemble listing or even comprehending the historicity of the historical layers of the timber architecture anymore because these constructions are scattered around an irregular landscape and environment that does not refer to them anymore. In the very few protected buildings there is a tendency for musealization and relocation. These three examples in São Lourenço do Oeste, Chapecó and in Videira have all been transformed into museums related to the colonization process. The easiness in disassembling and reassembling buildings made it very easy for relocation, but the relocations usually express the clash between urban and rural identities. The Bertasso House, the first picture for example, was transported from the rural area to the city center of the city of São Lourenço. The Bertasso House, on the other hand, is an urban house that has been relocated to an exhibition center in the outskirts of the city of Chapecó. We can also perceive that the buildings that have been selected are usually exceptions, very adorned buildings that do not refer to the austere panorama of the timber architecture of the Italians in general which again expresses the difficulties in extending the preservation schemes towards the historical layers. Well, continuing the presentation, I will show you the brick buildings of the Itajaí Valley, where the Italian immigrant architecture, architecture merged with the German immigrant architecture. So many German traditions were incorporated in terms of volumetry and orga organizational schemes of German houses. Although separate kitchens and full arcs are common in those buildings and are attributed to Italian immigrants, as well as the brick masonry. In relation to that, by 1808, Pietro Trentini, an immigrant from Trento, introduced the on-site fire bricks production in this valley, and nowadays it's possible to observe the rich masonry details as we can see in Choquette houses and Zimmet houses in these photos and all around the valley.
Despite the great diversity of immigration that has taken place in our state and the cultural diversity that this implies, there are places where one culture predominate, predominates over another. In the Itajaí Valley, the German culture predominance is well known, and it comes with a high touristification because the valorization of the German culture is so high that prompts to create false heritage and somehow shadows the Italian settlers' culture. As example, the tourism website of the Ascura municipality mentions as touristic attractions 14 constructions, mostly masonry brick churches and houses. However, only four could be considered as architectural heritage. The south of Santa Catarina was quite occupied by Italians predominantly in rural areas. The immigration initiated in 1877 to accommodate the irregular migratory waves that Itajaí Valley could not receive. The architecture of the South presents the usage of timber, stone, masonry, and bricks. It was also prone to lose the Brazilian population's influence previously established. Differentiating itself from the West and the Ajay Valley. Nevertheless, it was the use of stone masonry that sets the ensembles of the South apart. Stone was commonly used mostly for foundations, in which the stones are usually kept on display. The walls may be composed of natural, cracked, or carved stones, most of the time, employing dry joints. It is also common to find irregular stone walls merely assembled. Summing up, the stones was the building material that was commonly used by Italian immigrants in the south of Santa Catarina and easily found there in those times. Due to its evocative aesthetic, stone ensembles have been subject to more intense touristification. The production of wine played in their favor in terms of resignification. The region has undoubtedly followed the steps of well-established models in rural tourism, as Camino de Pedra experienced in the countryside of Rio Grande do Sul. Despite the difficulties in implementing such schemes, the Vale da Uva Gitch project positively influenced the valorization of familiar wine producing agriculture in the south of Santa Catarina. So, in this portion of the state, the tourism is helping to preserve our heritage. Well, summarizing this article, we reached some conclusions, which, which asks, Many portions of the state remain re misrepresented in terms of patrimonization as the West and the Midwest of the state. There are no financial sustainability and incentives to residential pro properties that was massively landmarked, what shows the lack of public policies and exposed the ensembles to disappearance. The predominance of rural properties listed and the lack of interest of the descendants of Italian immigrants to remain in the rural area and maintain their culture and architecture preserved. The fragility of construction materials, allied to the obsolescence of construction techniques, lack of conservation and abandonment of properties by newer generations. The absence of well-connected touristic itineraries to improve tourism, especially in rural areas. And finally, the invention of non-existent traditional costumes and architecture as well as the harmful tourism modification uh, that treats heritage preservation. So that's our presentation and our reality. And we really appreciate the opportunity to share with you. So we just say thank you so much.